Some good news this morning as Cyclone Jasper weakens to Category 1 status and a severe tropical cyclone landfall is no longer expected on Cairns. Your latest update brought to you by Force 13 Australia. It is a good news update, that's for sure. The cyclone has been stripped of its major thunderstorm, so it is thus a lot weaker, and we saw that as it blew through some of the weather stations on the Coral Sea. However, it is still a significant threat to Queensland. Your latest update brought to you by Force 13 Australia. Please do consider subscribing and leave a like on the video while you're at it. But without any further ado, let's get straight into it. So here's a look at our forecast track map for the system uh, and the Bureau of Meteorology. You can see it categor uh, Category 1 cyclone winds of 80 kilometers an hour still got destructive gusts in its core up to 125 kilometers an hour there's a cyclone watch now in effect for townsville up towards cape melville including port douglas where the landfill is expected and cans and inland to communities uh, such as atherton and that sort of area uh, so the cyclone still a significant threat to land it's no longer a severe tropical cyclone threat to land however we could still be seeing a damaging category 2 landfall uh, about midday wednesday into wednesday evening so here's a look at the multi-model diagnostics. You can see the cyclone just starting to come on radar right now. There's very little inner core structure to this storm, which is very good news indeed. You can see most of the forecast models not expecting it to re-intensify that much. Maybe another 10 to 15 knots, which would bring it up to Category 2 status. Yeah, but it would still only be a mid-range Category 2 strength storm. And even in a worst case scenario, the storm barely tickles Category 3 status. So we're not looking down the barrel of a guaranteed Category 3 storm at this time. We're now looking at a category 2 land for which you can see on day 2 on our forecast cone right now um, cyclone watched uh, from Cape Melville to Townsville including Cairns, Atherton, uh, Mariba, uh, Port Douglas and the inland community uh, inland communities such as Tully and Innisfail so again a cyclone uh, watch in effect for those areas it is expected to re-intensify as well in the Gulf of Carpentaria up to category 1 status that's in line with the Bureau of Meteorology's own forecast model however it will probably only be a weak category 2 cyclone cyclone as it makes landfall best case scenario for this system. So here's a look at the Access G3 model. You can still see it's got a defined wind field. It's still a strong storm uh, system. A Category 2 cyclone is nothing to play around with. It can and uh, could cause significant and extensive damage to property. However, we're no longer, as I said, staring down the barrel of a significant tropical cyclone landfall. Still, a Category 2 means winds in excess of 150 kilometers an hour. Uh, so they could still cause minor roof damage, some uh, tree uh, damage, Downing, it could knock over power poles, it could still do some pretty nasty damage indeed. And storm surge as well from this cyclone, although the storm is weaker, it still had plenty of time over the open ocean, so it could drive a significant amount of water on shore. So areas prone to coastal flooding should definitely be watching out, that's for sure. Here's a look at the icon model as well. You can see the cyclone moving into Cairns uh, about Wednesday midday. It's still a significant tropical cyclone. Winds approaching that sort of 60 knots sustained. That's up to around 115 to 130 kilometers an hour before moving into the Gulf of Carpentaria and strengthening uh, slightly uh, at around day five north of Mornington Island. You can see it does get back up towards category one status there. Um, the conditions in the Gulf of Carpentaria are pretty good for the cyclone to re-intensify. So we'll likely be seeing the storm strengthen a little bit there. Um, nonetheless, though, we're going to move over to windy.com and have a look at the forecast models right now. A significant tropical cyclone moving into Cairns at this time. So over here on windy.com right now, you can see we're looking at the radar imagery right now at the center of the cyclone where the cursor is right now. You can see the majority of the radar, oh, the rain is just over the north. Over here is Willis Island, currently with sustained winds of 40 knots, gusting up to around 55 knots. So it's still definitely a category one cyclone. It's a high end category one cyclone. It's close to category two intensity, but it is expected to weaken just a little bit more as it moves towards Flinders Reef over here where a direct pass is expected and up towards Holmes Reef, which will uh, probably get a close passage in the northern side of the system later today uh, and into tomorrow. So you can see the cyclone still holding on to that category one status, but I'll illustrate my point with how bad this system looks over on the visible satellite imagery. You can see it's a very defined swirl like feature. But if we were to take a look at infrared satellite imagery, which shows how intense the thunderstorms are around the system, which means uh, how strong the cyclone is, uh, you can see right now it is looking absolutely miserable. There's no thunderstorms around the center of the system at all. And in fact, the ones that were there about two hours ago have since died off uh, quite substantially. So it is a weak tropical cyclone, put it that way. However, sea surface temperatures, as it gets closer to Cairns over these shallow reefs here, are only going to increase. So they're about 27 degrees right now 
now, they'll jump up to around 28 to 29 degrees Celsius. And as a result, we'll likely be seeing some strengthening in the tropical cyclone as it moves closer to its landfall on Cairns. So it is still, uh, it still has that chance for re-strengthening. It is most likely going to re-strengthen as it approaches the Queensland coastline. We can see that with the forecast models right now. So the ECMWF forecast model, uh, initializing it as a really disorganized system. You can see the red wind still down here, which means it, do, it does have gale force winds, nasty gale force winds as well, approaching Hamilton Island and Bowen and Mackay. So they're probably getting damaging wind gusts at this time. However, definitely not cyclone conditions as we thought a couple of days ago, but you can see two Tuesday, it wraps itself up, those gales wrapping its way around the center of the system, which likely means it'll be blowing up some significant thunderstorms at this time. Wind shear as well becomes a lot more favorable, which means these thunderstorms will be able to organize into an eye-like feature. And then it just becomes a matter of time, making landfall just north of Cairns, in fact, just north of Cairns, a couple of kilometers north of Cairns, south of Port Douglas, um, on about Wednesday morning into Wednesday midday, uh, where it could be a category two. It's looking like a high-end category one, category two, strength cyclone at this time we're definitely not looking at a high-end category 2 category 3 cyclone uh, which is a lot of good news indeed so Cairns is probably going to dodge a bullet in the form of Jasper it is still however going to be a significant cyclone upon landfall a category 2 is nothing to be playing around with that's for sure so um, we'll take a look at another model right now, the Access G3, zooming right in. This is the most intense model run that we have right now, making landfall just north of Port Douglas, which gives it an extra couple of hours to strengthen on Cape Tribulation. So between Port Douglas and Cairns, you'll be seeing the strongest winds uh, being uh, funneled ashore. Winds probably approaching the 60 knots, that's 130 kilometers an hour sustained. That's sustained winds, however, so peak wind gust will likely be approaching 180 to 190 kilometers an hour in this situation. So I would recommend that completing your preparation Operations to sustain a category uh, a 200 kilometer an hour wind gust, uh, which is a very significant wind gust, uh, gust indeed, and it could strip a roof off a well built home. So make sure you are preparing adequately for this system. I'm going to leave the preparations checklist to, uh, at the end of the video for you to screenshot. Uh, so stick around for that. But right now, still again with the models, we're going to jump forward a little bit and take a look at the storm in the Gulf of Carpentaria. So Thursday, it moves across the Cape York Peninsula and re emerges Friday morning uh, of Saturday south of some of the Aboriginal communities um, on the Cape York Peninsula, north of Mornington Island, however, and into Friday, you can see it re-strengthened substantially up to about cyclone status Saturday morning uh, before it really starts to wrap those gales around. And it looks like by the end of Saturday into Sunday, it's approaching uh, the northeastern portions of the Northern Territory, still as a category one cyclone uh, on that. And I don't believe, I believe the Icon model has it re-strengthening in the Gulf of Carpentaria, yeah, just not to the degree that the Access model has it. And the GFS, I don't think re-strengthens it anymore. However, a couple of model runs has been calling for it to move over sort of Melville Island and then into Darwin as a category one or category two cyclone in around 12 days time. I don't think that's a plausible scenario, however, at this time. So rainfall is another substantial threat from this cyclone. We're going to be seeing some pretty significant rainfall totals as this storm moves ashore um, as a result of this cyclone. So you can see again, rainfall increases Wednesday as the cyclone approaches landfall, which likely means that the models are predicting an increase in thunderstorm activity, which is a very plausible scenario indeed. And the cyclone making landfall being, uh, being smooshed up against the Great Dividing Range actually, and driving incredible rainfall totals around Woodrow Woodrow, Port Douglas, even down to Ravensholm and Tully. So we'll likely be seeing some pretty significant rainfall totals, which will probably be approaching the half a meter mark up to 500 millimeters. And in some places, apparently up to 900 millimeters as per this model. Port Douglas expecting 726 millimeters. So mm, yeah, quite a substantial amount of rainfall, that's for sure. Uh, Cairns itself expecting about 400 millimeters from this cyclone, which will fall in about 24 hours. So again, flash flooding is certainly possible as a result of this cyclone. Inland communities such as Mariba and Atherton, probably about 150 millimeters. And if you go Going further inland to around Mount Garnet, you're probably looking at 25 millimeters, so really not that much. Raven, so up to 100, Innisfail 250, and down towards Tully, about 300 millimeters of rainfall expected. But yeah, it looks like around Cooktown we'll be looking at up to 900 millimeters of rain from this cyclone, which is plausible indeed, considering how wet this uh, location of Australia is normally and how. Um, 
how much thunderstorm activity we are expecting to blow up in a somewhat organized fashion as a result of this cyclone getting in, into more favorable conditions. So yeah, some significant rainfall totals expected, that's for sure. But that basically does it for our uh, tropical cyclone update on um, Jasper at this time. You can see it is a really grim looking system, that's for sure. It is not looking pretty indeed. Um, significant winds still, however, and they're extending quite a long way out of the uh, cyclone. Hamilton Island Airport getting gusts up to 45 km, uh, knots at this time, and it's up to 85 kilometers an hour. So there's still some pretty significant damaging wind gusts extending as far south as Mackay. And these winds are persisting right down towards sort of the Harvey Bay region. You can see 20 knot winds down there, sustained up to gusts maybe up to 35 knots so boating um, basically anywhere off the Queensland coastline is going to be really unpleasant. So we're going to be watching this system very closely throughout the rest of today watching for thunderstorm activity and watching for potential restrengthening. Uh, re-strengthening. It's probably going to start re-strengthening late tonight into tomorrow morning. The earlier it starts re-strengthening the stronger the system has uh, potential to get to uh, so we're hoping that the re-strengthening holds off for as long as possible but uh, hope for the best in cans and prepare for the worst. That's the latest from us. Please like the video and subscribe and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye. Thank you for watching our content this update. If you enjoyed it be sure to subscribe to get more updates covering all things weather and geophysics impacting Australia and the Oceania region. Subscribe to our other channels for more content from across the network and be sure to check out our website where you can find free access to floater and radar imagery and articles on everything weather and much more. If you wish to support us directly, you can purchase some of our merchandise. We have a wide variety of clothing and homeware. Or you can become an ultimate fan, which is the best way to directly support us, granting you some sweet perks and offers, including features in our custom storm animations, live streams, and much more. <laughs>